Question 10. On any given day, the number x of telephone calls that Daniel receives is a random variable with this probability distribution. Now, just think about what this means. It means that 0.2, or 2 tenths of the time, he doesn't get any calls. 0.2 of the time he gets one call, half the time he gets two calls, and one tenth of the time he gets three calls. According to this, he never gets four or more calls. Now find the mean of x. What we need to do whenever we're seeing this word mean with regard to a probability distribution is we need to find the expected value. So to do that, we need to add an extra row here, and we need to multiply each score by its probability. Zero times anything is zero. One lot of 0.2 is 0.2. Two lots of 0.5 is 1, and three lots of 0.1 is 0.3. And then we need to add these up. Now, this row can be just added to check that they always equal 1, because all probabilities in the, all the options should add, add up to 1. But when we add these four numbers together, this gives us the expected value, which is the mean. Now, this is a two mark question, so clearly they want to see if you can work it out the correct way by making this extra row and then adding the things up. 0.2 plus 1 plus 0.3, that gives me 1.5. So that's the answer. And the working that they want to see is this. Now, by coincidence, if you add up 0, 1, 2, and 3, you get 6. And if you divide by how many options there are there, which is 4, 6 divided by 4 is also 1.5. But if you do it that way, you won't get any marks at all because that's actually just a coincidence in this case that it gives you the same answer. Okay, part two says, what is the probability that Daniel receives only one phone call on three consecutive days? Now, consecutive days are days in a row. So this is not really a probability distribution question. It's really just a probability question, but we need to take our information from the table. Now we can see that the chance of getting one phone call in any given day is 0.2. That's 2 tenths. So two ways you might want to answer this question is to say, well, we need that to happen again and again and so the chance of getting it, probability of one call on three consecutive days, well, you need to do 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2. Or another person might write that out as 0.2 cubed. Or another person might say 0.2, that's one fifth. So if we've got one fifth and we have to cube that, this is a nice easy way to do it. I know that 5 times 5 times 5 equals 125, so this is 1 out of 125. Or if you've done it with decimals, then you're going to get equals 0.008. Both of these answers will be marked exactly the same and marked correct. Now, if you're having trouble thinking through how to do this, you might have wanted to do a tree diagram. It's not absolutely necessary to get the marks, but it might help you. So you can think, what's the chance of getting one call and getting not one? And then on the second day, what's the chance of getting one call or not one? And then one call or, oops, or not one. Now what we want is to go all the way up this section of the tree. So the chance of getting one call is one fifth or 0.2 and again, and again, and we know that to get all the way up here and to get it happening three times in a row, we need to multiply the branches together, and that's how we get this working. Now, part three is quite tricky. Daniel receives phone calls on Monday and Tuesday. What is the probability he received, received exactly four calls over those two days? Now, this is a conditional probability question. We can tell because they've given us a condition. They've told us that he definitely gets some calls. So we know that some days he doesn't get any calls. This happens 0.2 or 2 tenths or 1 fifth of the time. So by letting us know that he definitely got some calls, we can tell that that didn't happen. It was definitely one of these things. So what is the chance that he got four calls? Now, first up, you might want to think, well, what are all the things that could happen? Now, if you'd like to draw a tree diagram, you could go ahead and think, well, okay, he could get one call or two calls or three calls. Or zero, of course, but we know that that didn't happen, so you can leave that out of this tree. And then on the next day, you could either have got one or two or three. One, two or three. One, two or three. 
Now, rather than writing all the probabilities on all of the branches, we could just think about the sections that we're interested in. If he got one call and then three calls, that would give us four calls altogether. If he got two and two, that would also give us a total of four. Or three and one would give us a total of four. So we're only really interested in these three branches. Having this here helps you though, if you want you can write the probabilities on the branches. We've got 0.2 every time there's a 1 there, so I could put that in on all of the ones that I'm actually going to need. The chance of getting two calls is 0.5, so I can put that on both of the branches I'm going to use. And the chance of getting three calls is 0.1, so I need that there and there. Okay, now it's conditional probability, because it's conditional on the fact that you did get some calls. So, to think through the conditional probability formula, it actually says the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Now, let's have a look at how we can apply that to our question. We need to say the probability of four calls, given that he got some calls, needs to be equal to the probability of getting, well, can you get four calls and some calls at the same time? Of course you can. If you're getting some calls, I mean, sorry, if you're getting four calls, you're definitely getting some calls. So you can have this and this at the same time quite easily. All you need for that to happen is you need to be getting four calls over the two days. So it's the probability of getting four calls over two days over the probability of getting some calls. Now let's think, he needs to get some calls not just on Monday, but also on Tuesday. So it's the probability of getting some calls for two days. All right, let's do the top first. The probability of getting four calls over two days, well, if we got one and then three, we'd need to do 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. So here I'm gonna do 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. That's for my first bit. Or if I got two calls and then another two calls, that would be 0.5 times 0.5. So I need to add that on. Now I don't mind which of these options happened, and that's why I need to add them. Or if I got three calls and then one, that would also work. So let's do 0.1 times 0.2. Now all of that needs to be over the probability of getting some calls on those two days. Now let's have a think. The chances of getting no calls at all is 0.2. So the chance of getting some calls is 0.8. Now, a separate tree diagram might help you think this through. First day, some, none. Some, none, some, and none. Now, a lot of people will just think this through in their head without actually drawing it up. But this is what we need to be thinking through to think, well, the chance of getting some calls is 0.8 the first day, and the chance of getting some calls the second day is also 0.8. So we need 0.8 times 0.8 on the bottom of our fraction. Throw all of that into your calculator, and what you should get is 0.29 over 0.64, which when you simplify that fraction, should give you 29 over 64. And that's the answer.